Hey everyone, it's World Film Geek, and I've interviewed Braden Doomler, his best known as a cinematographer who's directed two films. His third film as director, the sci-fi horror film What Lies Below, is coming out on December 4th. Enjoy the interview. I say What Lies Below was amazing. I love that um, it took the whole mother's boyfriend sinister and added a whole new twist of things and it's you know never i've never seen anything like it so it came out really well oh thank you so much i appreciate that it's always that's what that's what make lips for is uh, people to, to respond to their, to their their films and their their brainchilds that's awesome so my first question is what was the inspiration behind the story yeah uh so uh what lies below uh, was actually originally titled Viscous, uh, was a uh, synthesis of two ideas, really. The first was, was an image I had in my head of this beam of light coming down from the sky and hitting a man in the chest in the middle of the woods. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm certain that this is taken from some movie or some poster or somewhere, uh, and it's locked in my unconscious, and I have no idea where it is uh, and what, what film that is. But Sounds like, I was obsessed yeah, with that image. I think uh, yeah, it sounds like um, I think fire in the sky. I think that might have been it, because that's what it's. I think that's yeah. something like that. I think that might have been it. There you go. That might be it. <laughs> you finally unlocked it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, there was a poster. Yep, that that that's totally probably what was in my head at first, right? Yeah. Uh, and I was obsessed with it, uh, even knowing that it was probably stolen from somewhere. Um, and and I couldn't stop thinking about it. Uh, and I started to think even more broadly about, like, who is this man? I started to ask questions about, who is this man? What is the light? Uh, is anyone watching him? Mm -hmm. And who are they? Right? right? And that's when I started to think back on a childhood experience of mine. Uh, when I was five years old, uh, I was actually, my first ever crush was with, uh, was with my stepmom, mm -hmm. uh, Sandy. Uh, and Sandy will always tell strangers the stories of how when I was five years old, I used to go over to her house when she was cooking dinner, and I would pull on her arm and I would whisper in her ear, you should chase me around uh, the apartment and try to tickle me. <laughs> and Sandy would oblige, she would you know, run around and try to tickle me. Um, and it was all cute and adorable and innocent, but then you think about it and you go, what if the roles are reversed? What if Sandy is a man and I'm a five-year-old little girl? Yeah. Then all of a sudden it gets into this gray area of appropriateness that you're just not quite sure about. Mm -hmm. And so I took that idea, that experience, and I fused it with that light. And as I worked out of the villainry of, of John Smith, the light evolved and his ethos evolved uh, to what it became, the light in the lake. Um, and so that's really how the entire story came about. That's awesome. And I got to say, the film has a great cast. Um, Mena Suvari who was like one of my favorites, um, Emma, Emma Harvath and Trey Tucker. Trey Tucker really surprised me as John. I mean, the way he just presented himself, he goes from being Mr. Nice Guy one minute, and then the next he's just like, wow. He, you know, I mean, he yeah. still sounded cool, but he had that, you know, you could know, you got that sinister sound to him. Like, you know, he's ready to just like do what he has to do. What was it like working with them? Uh, it was amazing. Uh, you know, I, I, each actor uh, brought their own uh, thing, to, you know, their own talent to it. Uh, they were all incredibly talented, but they all had uh, superpowers, so to speak. And, for instance, Mina, uh, she was my rock. Uh, I told her very early on, I go, Mina, this is my first feature. You know, uh, I'm, I'm nervous, I'm scared, and, and I'm going to rely on you uh, because you're so much more experienced uh, than I am, uh, so much more knowledgeable than I am, mm -hmm. and so incredibly talented. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rely on you. And, and so when, when there were days when we barely, we barely had one more setup left uh, and I had to just get it in one take, I would rely on Mina in that moment to nail it, you know, because she was such a pro and she would bring it every time, no matter whether it was the first take or the 30th. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and having that, um, that, that backbone, like that, that thing that you could rely on, uh, um, it was so essential to the film. And, and I also think her belief in the film is what led to Trey and Emma coming on board because she gave it a sense of validation, the project. Uh, mm -hmm. She gave it a certification by coming on board. And so when we saw the tapes of Trey um, going on what you speak to, the, the most fascinating thing about him and his audition tapes was that he was able to take the, a material or something I wrote that was intended as very mundane and make it sinister. He made lines that I did not think were creepy, creepy. 
you know. <laughs> I was well aware there was plenty of creepy lines in there, but there was other lines that he found ways to reinterpret them in 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 moments that I never expected. And that is what you want as a filmmaker is you want somebody who challenges you and who elevates your material even more. And he did that in such incredible dynamic ways. Uh, I still remember one of the other great strengths of his is, uh, is his control. Uh, because the material is so much, is he bad, is he good, is he bad, is he good, we had to be able to control his levels. Uh, which is a difficult thing to do when you shoot film. So what we did is whenever there was a moment that was subtle, like the, like when John Smith touches Libby's shoulder in the dining room scene while he's hugging Michelle, yeah. um, we would do it at levels. So it would be at a, a we called it our creep barometer. It would start at a three mm-hmm. and then at a five and then at a seven and then at a 10. And then we were when Daniel and I were in the editing room, uh, the, the editor Daniel and I, we would be able to dial up or dial down the creepiness to match the audience expectations at that moment. Uh, and that really helped. Uh, and, and finally, I'm sorry, I'm such a long answer. I have to talk about Emma though, because oh, yeah. she's so incredible. Um, she, I, I, I her first audition tape. I was uh, a little bit worried about scared of, you know, interested, but wasn't sure what I was interested in. It, it was just, I, I was having trouble with it. So I sent it to a friend mm-hmm. and my friend said, yeah, she's got a real Jack Nicholson quality to her. <laughs> and I go, what do you mean? And he and 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 he goes, well, she's he's he, she she's she is either completely crazy or an absolute genius. And it didn't take long on set for me to realize which one was true. I mean, she she is really a genius. She is so cerebral, so in her head, so focused and composed, and she is thinking out. She's plotting out every moment um, while she's sitting in her corner reading her script. Uh, and she's so quiet and so uh, introverted. And when she comes in front of the camera and you say action, it's like an explosion yeah. of emotion and an explosion of dy- uh, dynamics. Um, and, and and just seeing her ability to uh, stay so grounded yet to open her eyes just the slightest bit, it's like this, ex- every time you see it, it's like this fireworks of, of new uh, law uh, emotions and, and feelings, and it, it's just so incredible to watch. She's absolutely mesmerizing. She's actually now casting out the Lord of the Rings series on Amazon, yeah. uh, which I'm so excited for her. She's going to be one of the leads there, uh, so it's so cool. That's awesome. So how long did shooting take, and um, were there any difficulties? You said, As you said, this was your first feature. Were there any diff- challenges that you faced on set during production? Yeah, there's so, there's so many. Um, so... The, uh, we, we shot, we were intended to shoot 20 days, but we shot 19. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is because the lamp rays, the lamp rays, uh, which are featured in the film are actually incredibly hard to find. Uh, they're not hard to find, they're hard to shoot. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the reason for that is because they are a parasite. They're an incredibly invasive species. They are considered a cancer to any ecosystem they inhabit. So as a result, most states mandate that if you catch a lamprey, you have to exterminate it immediately. Mm-hmm. So you can't hold, hold on to them. You can't allow them to cross state borders because you don't want them to infect a new ecosystem. Right. And you can't shoot them. So it becomes so hard. So the, the only, so when we couldn't get the lampreys and the day we were supposed to get them, we had to, uh, I had to find a friend of a friend who is studying biology uh, in Vermont, who just happened to catch lampreys every now and then through their their studies. And we went up there uh, to their little office and shot one lamprey, one single lamprey they had to make it look like the multitude that you see in the film. Oh, wow. Uh, and so that in, so, so all the different lampreys that you think are all there, it's actually just one person, one lamprey that was shot over and over again, as well as uh, American eels, which had to fill in for the lampreys in the wide shots because we could find many of those easily. Oh, that's uh, amazing. Through our, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, that was, that was definitely a challenge. <laughs> So finally, with film and TV production back on the rise, and th- you know, like I said, this was a great film, and I'm so glad that this is your first feature. Um, do you have any more ideas down the line to do any more feature films? Yeah, I have uh, a 
a ton. I, I have, I, I, I've made it a rule to myself that no matter what's going on in, in the film world, uh, the only thing I can control is writing. Mm -hmm. And so I write all the time. I, I'm actually sitting in front of an outline right now for a feature that I'm working on. Awesome. Well, I have a film, a script called uh, Mold, uh, which is a, a sci-fi psychological thriller about a, a man who finds a mold in his apartment and it starts to grow everywhere and he can't stop it. It starts to grow on his skin. And then he realizes that it's a psychedelic as well. Oh, wow. Um, and it starts to take some crazy turns as you go down into the world of uh, the psychedelics and the mold and where it comes from. Um, and then I have a... Uh, a, a Russian mafia uh, thriller film called The Close of Holy Darkness about a retired assassin of the, the war mm -hmm. uh, that's in the witness protection uh, program in Vermont um, and then his cover is blown and so he has to go back and be the ruthless killer he was to protect his family. Oh wow. Um, and then finally uh, and then I have another uh, historical horror film called uh, The Strong about uh, the berserkers. They were this yeah. A uh, very well-known uh, group of warriors that were so crazy when they went into the battle that people thought they were immortal. And it's all focused on who the berserkers were and what they worshipped and the evil that they worshipped um, that comes from the sea. And uh, so that's that, that script. And I have others that I'm, I'm not thinking of, like Amaruk, uh, yeah. about five guys going to a bachelor party in Yukon territory mm -hmm. uh, and getting becoming the hunted. Um, and many other films that, uh, you know, I hope to make one day, uh, including a sequel for What Lies Below. But, yeah, you know. definitely. Cause I, I could definitely see a sequel of that one. That was, that's just the way it ended. I'm like, wow, I could, I could definitely see a, a sequel of that for sure. Thank you so much. Yeah, I hope so. Maybe. You never know. <laughs> yep. So What Lies Below is coming out on December 4th. And those who love the whole family motif, you know, sinister boyfriend thing, but wants a very original twist to it, they're going to want to see this. And Braden, thank you so much again for taking the time to talk about the movie. Thank you, Albert. It was an absolute pleasure, and uh, thank you for your kind words on our film. All right, and you take care and stay safe. You too. All right, bye-bye.